In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use Blender's light and shadow linking, which is a new feature in Blender 4.0. So Blender version 4.0 was just recently released a few days ago, so if you haven't downloaded and installed it, then definitely go do that on Blender's website. So in this example scene here, I have a few different objects, and then I have this area light shining on the objects. But let's say I want some of these objects to not be affected by the light. Well, to do that, you can select the light, and then you can click here on the object data properties. And you're going to open up the shading tab here on the object data properties of the light. And you can see there is light linking and shadow linking. So I'll first do the light linking. So I'll click new here to add a new light linking. And you can see it says light linking for area. I'll just rename it to area light. So now we can add some objects into this section here, which the light will affect. So to add in objects, we can drag them from the collection. So make sure you have the light selected, and then you can click and drag and drop the plane into that section there. And I'll also do that for the sphere and also the Suzanne. So now it looks exactly the same. You can see that all of the objects are being affected by the light. But what I can do is I can click on the check mark here, and that is going to disable the light for that object. So I could, for instance, disable the Suzanne by clicking there, and now you can see it's not being affected by the light, but these objects are still being affected. And you can also drag in collections of objects. So I've just added a new collection here, and then if I put the Suzanne head and the sphere inside this collection, I can again click on the light, and then I can click and drag and drop the collection into that box there. And then I can also drag and drop the plane, so I'll put that into the light linking as well. And now if I uncheck the collection too, these objects won't be affected because they are both in that collection. Now you can reuse the same light linking data on other lights. For example, I have this big area light right here, and just so you can see it better, it is a bright red color. So if I go here to the light linking by clicking on the light, then choosing the object data properties, and then going here to light linking, you can click on the drop down and you can choose the light linking data. So I want to add the same one which I used earlier, which was the light linking for area light. So I'll choose that and now it's going to give us the same data. So now if I turn off the collection two, you can see that that action is going to be affecting both of these lights because both of the lights are using this light linking data here. Now there is another way to do this by using a shortcut key. So what you can do is first hold down the shift key and select any objects that you want to be affected or not affected by the light, then you can hold down the shift key and you can lastly select the light. Then you can press control L for the link and transfer data and you can go down here to the bottom and there is link receivers and link blockers. So I'm going to link receivers and I'm going to exclude. So now that I've excluded those objects, this light is not affecting these objects. You can see what it's done here. It's just added all these objects and then it's unchecked them. But I can check any of them back on if I want them to be affected by the light. Now the light linking can also be used on objects which have an emission material. So I have this cube here and the cube has a really bright emission material so it is super bright. But let's say that I want it to be this bright but I don't want it to blow out the lighting from the other objects. So you can click on the cube, you can go here to the object data properties, and then go down here to light linking and I will just click on new here to add light linking to that cube and then I can just drag in the different objects. So I'm going to drag in these three objects and then I can just turn them off. This cube is still really bright but it's not affecting the other objects. So the other objects are only being affected by this other light. So even though this cube is really bright you can see it's not putting any light on the other objects. Now, as well as light linking, there is also shadow linking. So you can do the same thing and you can make a certain object not cast a shadow. So to do this, we'll click on the area light and we're again going to go here to the object data properties. And you can go here to shading, but then instead of the light linking, we want to use the shadow linking. So let's click on new to add new shadow linking. So then again, I will just drag all of the objects from the outliner into the shadow linking. So if I don't want these two lights to cast a shadow on this plane here, I can just turn off the sphere and the Suzanne and now you can see they're not going to cast a shadow on the ground. And another example of where this might be useful is if you have one object which is casting a shadow on another object, but you don't want to have that shadow. So right here on this sunlight, I've just added the shadow linking and I've added the objects, and I can now just deselect the Suzanne, and now you can see the Suzanne isn't casting a shadow, so the sphere doesn't have the shadow of the monkey head. So that is how you use the new light linking and shadow linking features in Blender. So let me know what you think of this feature, and let me know if you think it'd be useful in your projects. And if you'd like to watch more Blender Quick Tips, you can definitely check out my Blender Quick Tips tutorial playlist. I'll have a link to that in the description, and I'll have it right up there on the end screen. So I hope you found this helpful, and thanks for watching.